Hi everyone, welcome back to Novelist Unwind. I'm here today with Hope Bollinger, and I think Hope is my very first YA author. So this is really, really exciting. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I've been uh, listening to a lot of Novelist Unwind, and I feel honored to be on here, so thank you. Well, I'm really happy to hear that. That's, that's great. That's great. We're glad to have you. So just a little bit about Hope. Hope is not only a, an author, she is also a literary agent for C-Y-L-E, right, which stands for Kyle Young Literary. I don't know what the E stands for. Elite. He I, had to make it work with his name. So Yes, because his name is spelled C-Y-L-E, Kyle. So yeah, that that's really cool. And um She's been very successful with that already contracted, what, over 40 books from what I understand, which is wonderful. Writing books of her own and also writing screenplays, which is also just fantastic. So I hope we get to talk about that a little bit too. And over 800 articles, which I find to be just outstanding at, at your age to have written that many articles and have them published. So wonderful career already getting started and I should say too that Hope is a graduate of the Taylor Young Professional Writing Program which is which is also really a, a great achievement. So Hope, I mean obviously you have been involved in writing um, for a very long time, started at a young age. Tell us about about just where your writing journey started and how your your heart has just been impacted by or you know what has impacted your heart to write for for God. Yeah, absolutely. So I've technically always been writing pretty much as soon as I could read. I used to have these little booklets that I used to write in first grade. They're, I think, three pages long. I provided my own illustrations that I thought were really cool at the time. <laughs> um, so I've always been writing, but I never really considered it to be a career. For the longest time, I thought I was going to be a teacher, and then I discovered to be a teacher, you actually need to be able to teach. And I <laughs> Yeah. So um, <laughs> that career kind of went away. So, um, <laughs> so uh, kind of what got me started into novel writing was actually I had a friend in high school who was writing novels. And at first I thought they were pretty crazy for doing this, you know, uh, because you just sit down and write 300, 400 pages at a time. The longest thing I'd written at the time was like a 70 page play. So I, I, significant. I <laughs> at 16, yes. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of basically wanted to relate to this friend in some way other than, you know, talking about the movies or TV shows that we like to watch. So I just thought I would give it a try since they did it. I might as well give it a try too. Um, and then I got bit by the bug and just kind of wanted to keep writing novels. Um, and you'd also asked um, kind of why, how long have I been wanting to write for God? How is that kind of tied in there? And I feel like it's always been in there. You know, I feel like if, when you are a Christian and when your heart is on fire and you just feel the love of God, you cannot help but put it in to writing. And so, I, I mean, I write for both the Christian market and I do write for the general market, but no matter what I'm writing for, I always try to inject something of those values that I feel. So, I mean, it's just, it's part of, he's given me this gift. And so I have to give it back in return. That's right. That's right. And, and you're right. Even when you're writing for the general market, your worldview and your, your values are just going to come, come through with that and, you know, praise God for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us about your book. Um, <clears throat> we're here today to talk about your second book, but talk just about your first book. Sure, absolutely. So um, excited. The sequel is coming out for my um, modern day Daniel trilogy. So I'll go ahead and show the first book um, that came out last year. Uh, we had the, I think, one year anniversary like a month ago. So it was oh, exciting. Well, congrats. Well, show it again and tell oh. them it's because it's called Blaze. Yeah. Called Blaze. Um, and so basically, what I do the entire trilogy is I take the book of Daniel, I chopped it up into three, and then oh, I put wow. it in a modern day high school. Wow. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, it basically follows the story of Danny as he is um, basically forced to transfer to this rival boarding school after his school mysteriously burned down. And so chaos ensues. There's an arsonist <laughs> on the loose. So not only does he have to acclimate to this new environment, but he has to figure out who the arsonist 
is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is the first book. In the second book, things escalate even more. Now there's a killer on the loose um, in the school, um, at least supposedly. That's what he's thinking is happening. And so he's trying to narrow down who he thinks could be a possible suspect before they add him to the hit list. Oh, so. wow. wow. And it's called Den, D-E-N. Yep, so the second one is called Den. If you've read the book of Daniel, you can guess it's based on the lion's den. Um, and then the publisher just offered a contract for book three, Vision, which should be coming out a year from. Oh, wow, wow. So, and how will, what happens in Vision? That's a, I mean, Daniel is a hard book to understand when you get to those chapters. So, I mean, that must have been pretty exciting to really dig into that and come up with the storyline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was tricky. I, I took prophecy classes in at Taylor University. I took as many classes as I could from the Bible major. I wasn't a Bible major myself, so I was the only one in the class who wasn't. <laughs> um, but I, I try to take as many as I could so I could understand it because those those last six chapters get a little crazy in there so I, I tried my best to modernize it the best way I could we'll see if it worked out um but yeah wow wow that's quite I um, I just love that I love that you've taken a book like Daniel and of course we're so familiar with the story of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and being thrown in the furnace and Daniel the Lion's Den I mean we teach that and then also just to bring in this other whole element of it and and have it all be modern day so yeah kudos to you for that that's great that's great so why a because you are a young person is that why you like to write why a or is there something else behind that well this specific book actually the idea for it came to me in a college class we were going over the whole old testament in a semester which is a lot <laughs> i've done that. yes it is <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we were going over the book of Daniel, uh, the teacher had said something that really stood out to me. I never really thought of it this way before. She said Daniel and his three friends would have been about 14 or 15 years old when they were taken into the Babylonian captivity. And I mean, I haven't often thought about certain Bible characters being that age. Apparently the disciples were probably about 18 years old or in that rough age range. I've always pictured people being in their 30s or something yeah. during the stories. Yeah. So I figured I really wanted to put it in a high school because I feel like a lot of what teens are dealing with right now is very relevant in the story of Daniel, kind of having to acclimate to these new environments that basically don't want them to be who they are, especially if they are a Christian. Mm -hmm. These environments are very anti-Christian. And mm -hmm. so I really wanted to see what that would look like to be in a hostile environment and still thrive, but still stand strong in what you believe. Oh, that's great. That's a wonderful message. And I think you're right. I think it's a message kids kids need to hear. So, wow, wow. All right. Um, I read on your bio that you are the best combo of driven and nerdy. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> and yeah. you, you mentioned two people, and I think I know who one of them is. And, and of course, I had no clue who the other one was. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. Of that. So it was Leslie is it Leslie Nope? Yeah, Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt. So for anyone who's familiar with the show Parks and Rec, I'm kind of a combination of uh, two of the main characters. I, I knew Leslie. I did not know Ben. So <laughs> I, I've not really watched it very much. So, okay, there you go. But yeah, so I, it's a weird combination to be... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, because I'm very driven, very type A. I don't know if you're familiar with Enneagram, but I'm three, a three wing four. So, um, I very, that. very perfectionistic, very high achieving. So, um, I mean, it definitely comes to bite me in the butt a lot, <laughs> but, um, that, but yeah, I mean, I feel like you can't be a writer and not be nerdy about something because we, we get excited about anything yeah. from history to, yeah you know, anything. So, I, I mean, I'm just that combination, I guess. I love it. But you also talked about, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice today. Um, I, I love that you talked about dressing up as Little Red Riding Hood <laughs> and going out in public. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I've done, I've done many weird things. I, <laughs> I think it all started in a sociology class in high school where we were supposed to intentionally break social norms and then it's just, it's stuck. I've worn weird <laughs> outfits in public. So I've, <laughs> I've sunned my McDonald's order in a prom dress like a Disney princess. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
so many things. Worn a fairy costume out in public. I, I have a dinosaur onesie. So I, I just have lots of really strange costumes that may get worn in my town square during any given moment. Oh, that's great. That's great. I've actually seen you in your dinosaur onesie. So. <laughs> Well, what's it like being a literary agent? I mean, what are some of the, um, oh, what do I want to ask? What are some of the, the fun things about doing that? And how is it different from, oh God, I guess I want to know, like, I don't want to ask you what you want to like best, writing or agenting, because that can be like choosing your favorite child, I suppose. But what are some of the really cool things about being an agent that, that's fun for you? Yeah, so I, I mean, I love a lot about the job. I mean, obviously the favorite part is when one of my clients finally has their book accepted by a publisher because yeah. I just, I know how many years it has taken them to get that way, right. especially if they were in the querying trenches for agents. I mean, you were talking about like seven plus years from writing the book to mm -hmm. getting in the hands of someone. So, I mean, I always, I always enjoy that part of the process. I, whenever my clients have a book out, I'll always purchase it. I, I, you know, if I'll ever meet them in person, of course, I want them to sign it. Um, that's really fun. A really other cool thing is actually building a lot of connections in the publishing industry. Um, usually every single week, I'm on a call with about somewhere between two to four editors or two to four different publishing houses. So it's, it's really cool because honestly, editors, they're not as scary as they look. They, they're nerdy like us too, you know, and so it, it's fun being able to talk to them about loving cats or, you know, just so, something that you like to kind of nerd out about. It's really, it's fun talking with them. So I, I really love that part of the process, being able to talk to different publishers um, and just being able to open doors um, for people. Mm -hmm. I just... I, back in high school when I was querying agents, I just wouldn't hear back from people, you know, even if you heard back, it would be a form rejection. Mm -hmm. So I kind of really want to demystify the publishing process for a lot of people because I'm learning as I go. So I want to help people also to learn as I'm going. Well, and I think you touched on something really interesting in talking about, you know, you know what the querying prep process is like. And, you know, for those who are more readers than writers watching, I mean, it can be a really long time. You know, you get your project, you get your proposal, you write something, you have to query an agent or publishers, and it's, it can be such a, and a lot of waiting. It's like you hurry up and then you wait. And, and knowing that, I'm, I'm sure that gives you an empathy for what your clients are, <laughs> are going through because you, you experience it too, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been, I've been through it all. I've been to writers conferences where, you know, uh, agents and editors just cut me off mid sentences, told me that won't sell, you know, that won't sell. Tell me what else you got. Um, I mean, I, I've been through it all. So I definitely do have empathy for my clients. I know what it's like to get a rejection from a publisher. I know what it's like to get like two rejections on one day from a publisher. Oh, wow. so, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> rejections are never fun. <laughs> Never, never, never. Well, that, well the, and then talk about um, also writing plays and not just writing them, but you've had them published. I mean, that is, that is great. So how, how did that all happen, take place? Yeah, so play publishing is definitely a whole other ball game. I, I still haven't figured it out for the most part. <laughs> um, it, it's tricky because you find yourself in a catch-22 with play publishing because um, most most often play publishers want you to perform your script before they'll take a look at it because they want to oh, know, wow. you know, it's performable. Oh, wow. um, but then most theaters won't take on a play unless it's published. And so oh, it's a, it's wow. a catch 22. I mean, I'm a theater nerd. I, I actually love playwriting more than book writing, which is funny because I yeah. love book writing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just, I managed to connect with um, an editor who was starting up a Christian play publishing house. And there's, there's only about three or four play publishers who do Christian plays mm -hmm. kind of on the market right now. So um, connected with them, sent in some plays. Uh, and so they got accepted. So I'm excited. That's exciting. That truly, truly is exciting. Congratulations. I just am really excited about your whole career again, because you're starting out so young and for and as you know, lots of times it can take five, eight, ten years for someone to go from wanting to be a writer to actually seeing that first book published. And, you know, a shout out to Taylor for having this professional writing program, which just seems to accelerate that process for, for talented and gifted young writers. That you, you don't have to go through quite that long waiting period. You 
got opportunities and connections that you're meeting right away. So that's really, that's really great. It's great. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Taylor program was great because they had you go to writers conferences, mm -hmm. like, I mean, you're in your first year. And so mm -hmm. it, it was, they, they definitely prepared us. So I'm, I'm grateful for that program. Yeah, and that can make a big difference. I mean, going to writers' conferences and meeting agents and publishers in, in person, I think can help speed up that whole process for anybody. You know, I, I mean, I know that was very important to me when I started going to writers' conferences. That's when things started changing, you know, and it became mm -hmm. more like this is a dream that could come true rather than just a, a pipe dream that I'm, you know, going to have all my life and nothing happened. So, so what's next for you? I understand you have another release coming out pretty soon, like in just another few months. So you want to talk about yeah. it? So we are learning really quickly about how difficult it is to release books back to back. <laughs> um, we're kind of in crunch time for both of them. So, um, so I co-wrote a book with a fellow agent friend, Alyssa wrote. It's titled Dear Hero. And basically what happens is a superhero and a villain meet on an app that pairs you with your nemesis. Um, and so they basically try to duke it out, but they don't expect to fall in love. And so. <laughs> that sounds really cute. What a fun idea. That, and, and that's a, a genius idea, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, congrats on that, too. And then do you have something after that already in the pipeline? Okay, so I mean, I have like eight books on submission right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, wow. It just depends on how those go. I know we have the sequel to Dear Hero coming out in April of next year, and then oh, Vision okay. obviously will come out in August. Um, but after that, I mean, we have various books at various publishers. So depending on just what, what happens, happens with that will dictate my, because I mean, I like to always write books with serious potential. So if one of them were to be taken on, then I would know what's happening next, but I don't know. <laughs> no, but that's an exciting place to be. You're a pretty fast writer, are you? It seemed like when I was reading your bio, it sounded like, yeah. Yeah, this one, I think this one, no, uh, Den took 27 days to write the first draft. Um, and then Dear Hero with Alyssa was a whirlwind. We were basically on a Google Doc and we wrote it in nine days. And it was, oh, I, I don't know if we remember half of what happened because <laughs> we were up late many nights. Um, so yes, I don't recommend writing a book in nine days, but I, I can usually consistently write a book in about a month. Of course, there's massive edits that are ahead after that. So yeah, for those watching, yes, it will be edited. It's not that this is not the nine day draft is not what you're going to see. I'm sure but, <clears throat> but it's good to get that story down. I mean, that's really, and yeah. And I struggle with that sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I can write fast and sometimes it's like, I cannot move on until that sentence is perfect and that paragraph is perfect and wow you can get really you know just slogged down in a story that way but you know it just it just depends just kind of depends oh yeah I mean there are days that are hard like you you just can't you know you get down like a hundred words and maybe that that's maybe like, that's what you get for the day and that's, that's it yeah yeah so show us blaze again and um, again this blaze is out the first book in the trilogy, Din, is also out now, just now being launched. So you want to grab a copy of it too, and then be on the lookout for Vision next year, and also for Hope's um, superhero book in September. <laughs> uh, what fun. Lots of good things coming for you. I'm just so excited for you. I'm excited too. It's it's yeah. crazy. It, I mean, you'd mentioned earlier, it's a lot of run and then stop and wait. And so we are the running stage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and may that last a long time. <laughs> okay. Well, since you watched some videos, you know, the last question that I usually ask is when you hit the end of a novel, what do you do to unwind? Hmm. Oh, it's hard because it really... It depends. I mean, usually there's a lot of chocolate that is consumed. <laughs> that is, um, I mean, usually take a break is yeah. usually that that is usually how I just because I don't know. I know some writers who when they write a book immediately, they have to start the next one. And for me, writing a book feels like running a marathon. Maybe this is why I should like write it in like a month. But <laughs> um, I usually feel exhausted after I have finished a book. So usually some food will be consumed. 
some books of other authors will be read and um, some binge, show, binge watching of shows may happen. <laughs> that yeah. is usually what happens. Those are popular answers. It seems like it, like reading other people's books and, and binge watching because it just seems like we've given so much of our own creativity out there and we just need to, to sit and veg or, or just sort of get um, the well fed again, you know, just to sort of pause and let things come in rather than going out. So yeah, it seems to be really a, a common theme. Hope, thanks so much for being my guest today. I really, really enjoyed talking with you. I love your youthful energy and <laughs> just <laughs> it's so good to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. It's an honor because you, you've had so many awesome guests in the past. So thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you too. And everybody, thank you for watching. We're always glad that, that you're here at Novelist and Wine and hope to see you again next time. Bye bye. <laughs>